to our 57 Bel Air project. Uh, the car originally came from North Winnipeg up in the Inner Lake area, stored in a barn for a lot of years. Um, story on the car was that it was found. Let's see if I get this right. A guy bought the car new from Winnipeg. Actually, I'll show you. Because in the back here, there is a, a tag from the dealership. Where did I find it? Here. Carter Motors. Hopefully I got that right. Carter Motors Limited in Winnipeg. So it's a Manitoba car. And it's not really legible, but the odometer says 14,523 miles. So as far as I know, that's all this car has on it. The guy drove it for that many K and then uh, the story is that he blew a rad hose and let all the coolant go out of it, fixed it, put water in it, and then because we're in Manitoba, got a cold snap somewhere in fall, cracked the block, pulled the motor out with intentions of putting the motor back into it, sat for years, sold it, traded it for some stuff, and it sat in the barn. And that's where I got it from. His, the guy I got it from, grew up with it in this barn. And it sat there and sat there, grew up with it. And once he got older, got to the point where the barn has fallen down, or did fall down, right behind the car. So he pulled the car out and sat outside for like two, three years, something like that. So there are a few little rust issues we've got to attend to, but I went ahead and started already putting the motor in like a year ago, and I'm trying to get back to it now so I can start documenting what we're doing now. So, this is a 2005 5.3 with a car intake. So we gotta do accessories and stuff like that. Um, and I'll show some more stuff when we pull the motor back out to finish the transmission cross member and that sort of thing. Uh, so the point we're at right now is the harness is done for the most part and I wanna put it in this corner but what we're gonna to do today is pull the brake master out and set it up where we're gonna put it and then figure out where we're gonna go through the firewall with the harness because the fuse block is in that driver's side of the car. And then we gotta pull the motor back out, finish the transmission mount, welding it onto the frame and cut off the original power glide mounts because it's right in the way of the exhaust. And then I can show a little bit of notching that I did and I think we're gonna have to do the oil pan modification on this engine, the same as I did on my RX-7, but we'll find out because I'm pretty sure the steering mechanism is in the way, but we'll come, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So it's Friday today, and most of my other work in the shop is at a standstill. So it's not even super full right now. So I can actually get some time in on this car because I've wanted to do that for a long time and it just, haven't gotten there so a um, little bit of body work on it not too bad I think for, for me it's gonna be good enough once we get into the rest of the car got to do an interior and a little bit of rust here and there but yeah, let's see if we get this up here try to get a little bit of a view here get my ugly mug out of there there we go so yeah, hopefully get it movable so it's not just stuck in one spot in the shop. And All right, so we uh, spent yesterday and got the harness all done up on the 57 here. So it's all laid in. I have to make uh, a mount for the ECU, a nice one, or buy one. I'm not really sure which way we're going to go at this point, but we'll figure that out. Um, but it's all in there, and now we can go on to other things, like finish the wiring, put a grommet in for wanting to go inside but I think before we do all that we're gonna pull the motor out and we're gonna finish the the mounts and everything so it's good to go clean up in the engine bay somewhat and then we can um, once we're cleaned up in the engine bay we can put it back in for its final and then we can work on the cooling system and the drive shaft transmission cooler those sort of things because the whole point of this year is just to get it so that it can move on its own power um, but that's not including brakes that's not including the broken leaf spring in the rear um, 
but it needs to steer it needs to be able to move on its own power so it's not just stuck in the corner of the shop here so i'll show you here here's the harness kind of laid out got the transmission um harness here that we haven't put down in the back just so it's not a pain in the butt um Probably I'm going to pull it all out, lay the harness on and clip it in, into where I want it and then we'll lay it into the car. So we have the harness over here runs underneath the brake uh, master, which I pulled out because it's a treadle valve system and we're going to upgrade to a vacuum assist with disc brakes in the front and we'll retain the, the drums in the rear. This is a cruising car, it's not supposed to be any sort of performance kind of car and um, just want to increase the braking capability and I did not want to even touch getting into the treadle valve anything I looked into said that they were just they're, they're not they weren't even good to begin with and to service them it costs them whole brake disc conversion in the front so here's the old treadle valve there's a little vacuum uh, canister and I'm guessing this bracket was an overflow we may still use it we'll find out down the road so that that all went in here so the master went there the vacuum canister went where the ecu was and then now we're going to put our fuse block right like that so it stays out of the elements in the engine bay and that is just dedicated for the engine and the fan um, when i did this harness initially i didn't have the fans hooked up in here so i had to run an extra wire which i'll have to fuse because i just didn't have the connectors for my fuse block i don't know where they went so there's a few things on the harness small things like that to do and an inherent problem with using the truck harness is you've got a million miles of math wire so i could cut that that, that down but we'll see where we're going to end up putting the the air filter yet and what kind of system we're going to use so the next step on this is going to be um like i said in the beginning is just finalizing everything, pull the engine out, finalize the engine mounts. Um, there's also gonna be a steering arm problem we're gonna have. Have to adjust that or figure that out. I'm also not sure if we're gonna to have to cut the pan like I did on my RX-7. So we'll find out, but um, next video, I hope that we should be pulling out the engine and um, gotta take the hood off, I guess. That's all in the way and um, get this sucker in here for the last time but there's a few videos before we get that but at least we're making progress now on so we got the car here we have the harness all laid on it where it wants to be or not where it wants to be, where we want it to be and the fuse block is all in and we're going to pull the motor out now and we're going to finalize the transmission mount we're going to finalize the engine mounts because i did notice it is actually slanted just a little bit so we're going to finalize that give us a little bit more room on the spark plug side um we're so we're gonna pull it all out finalize all that stuff clean up the engine bay as best as we can before we put the motor back in and then when we go to put the motor back in that's when we can put the harness on for the last time and put it all in and tie it all up so it's, it's gonna look good so that's where we're at today and we're gonna try to get this done before the end of the day it's what is the day today? It's six of what the fourteenth. Hey, it's Valentine's, Valentine's day. day. We love what we're doing. We love what we're doing. We love old cars, but more importantly, we love our spouses. So here we are during the day. Tonight is with the spouses. So here we go. Let's give this car some love. <laughs>
Oh, it's in there. Oh, I got her. I was looking for a 5 8 trench. Oh, no, that's great. There. But well, you don't need a wrench. No. no I don't I don't think that there's even anything on the back side there. Yeah. I don't think I put the nut in, so Yeah, just get in there and just rip her. Yep. Put it in a safe spot. Oh, let's go under the brake line here.
Uh, no, Craig. You think there's mice in this thing? I have not checked, but I will look now. Oh, delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's just all but good times, eh? Uh-huh. Best day at oh, work ever. Man. Glad we pulled that off. So we uh, got the motor out here and we have the brackets cut off. So now we basically have to clean up the engine bay and find out what all else we have to do before we can put the engine back in. There's some wiring, there's some cleanup, some paint, make it look all nice. Um, show here. When we pulled the engine out, one of the mounts I guess didn't quite tack on all that nice, so that guy is kind of popped off and that one. So I think when we go back in, we'll put the mounts in and we'll tack it again and we'll pull the motor back out and um, then gusset then brace them properly. But now it's kind of thrown off so I can't just tack it in and expect that it's gonna line up properly. And the steering arm uh, needs to come out to here. It's in the way of the pan. So that's what I was talking about before that the oil pan may have to be modified or modify that arm, not sure which way to go. But now we have those brackets out. We can, we've got lots of room for the exhaust. So we're just gonna trip over the transmission here. And uh, where'd you put the cross member? Crikey. We're gonna finish this thing up. I think actually I did finish welding it a year ago. So we're just going to clean it up and paint it and the two tabs that it goes on underneath and transmission cross member is going to be done and we'll put the engine aside for now. I could not remember if I put the converter bolts in this guy so we should probably check that as well before we just put it in and expect it to go somewhere and then the converter bolts aren't in and it's not going to be a good time so I think we're going to pull I think we're gonna pull the fan box off. We should probably just hook the battery charger up to that and see if the fan even runs. And pull that whole thing off and see what the heater core looks like. And find out what these other two uh, ports right beside the heater box, what they do. I know the wipers work. And we gotta figure out what the other wiring is. And then just clean everything up and paint it so it's all nice in the engine bay. 
before the engine goes in for uh, a fi finality. But I don't know, what do you think? What do you think about painting the firewall? I don't know what we want to do there. Yeah, give her a pressure wash, get her all pretty. I think that's probably the best thing is pressure wash it and see where it's at after that. Because some of that stuff, I don't know if it's going to clean up nice or if we should just paint it. I don't really want to paint it because then trying to find the right match might be kind of hard. But we'll go from there, see what else we can get to. But 